G'day guys, how you going? Hope you're all having a fantastic whatever time it is in your part of the world. Here in Australia it's night time and it's very very cold so I hope the weather is treating you kindly wherever you are. Tonight I'm going to be doing a movie review. Now this movie is from an area in Europe which is uh, very famous especially for the cinema lately, uh, very recently, but this film was made quite a while ago so it was very interesting to me to see if the old stuff compares to the new stuff. Now the film is in subtitles so I apologise for anyone who doesn't like that kind of thing but if you're familiar with my channel and you've seen a lot of my reviews you will notice that the majority of my films are in subtitles so if you don't like that kind of thing there are some reviews that I'll do that aren't in subtitles but you know I really like my foreign cinema so this one is no exception it's in subtitles it is from the old Yugoslavia now since then it's broken up into Serbia and Montenegro but this is 1998 when Yugoslavia was still around so it's in that sort of time period uh, it's a 1998 film directed by Amir um, Kastaritsa, who has also directed quite a few other films that have been fairly popular. And this one is rather unheard of, which is a real disappointment because it went under my radar and <clears throat> it was recommended to me from a friend on YouTube and I heard it's supposed to be a masterpiece. So it was $28, I saw it on the shelf, I thought it's definitely a risk I'm willing to take because that area of Serbia and um, you know Montenegro, that kind of area, have been... have gain notoriety from their films such as a Serbian film and uh, Life and Death of a Porno Gang. So this one, as I said, Amir Kastaritsa directed it and this is called Black Cat, White Cat. Now the synopsis is as follows. Matko is a small time hustler living in the gypsy seaside community with his 17 year old son Zari. After a failed business deal, he owes money to the much more successful gangster Dadan. Dadan has a sister, Aphrodita, that, is desperately wants, that he desperately wants to get married, so they strike a deal. Zara is to marry her, but none of the two care much for an arranged marriage. Zara is in love with Ida. Aphrodita is waiting for the man of her dreams. So basically what we have, it's set in the seaside gypsy community. Now, before I go on, this is spoken in three different languages. There's Serbian. Romani, I can't pronounce that, I thought it was Romanian, but it's not, it's kind of a gypsy sort of language, and Bulgarian. So unless you can speak all three of these languages, the subtitles are going to be very important. So it's based in this community in Yugoslavia, very remote sort of area, and it's a gypsy sort of lifestyle. So if you know about gypsies, you know what kind of mood you're in for in this one. And the main character name is Matko. Now Matko has a 17-year-old son named Zari, and they're kind of dodgy characters. They're likeable but they gain money in sort of dodgy situations and scenarios. So they're kind of dirty, but at the same time very likeable. They're not really evil, but, you know, they are just a little bit dirty, a little bit naughty. So they're going around and they're trying their best to get any money. You know, they're really struggling to make ends meet, as everyone in this community is. But they end up owing money to this local gangster named Dadan. Now, Dadan is played by a very well-known Serbian actor named Sridan Todrovic, who was Milos off a Serbian film. So if you've seen a Serbian film, you'll know exactly who he is. He plays a very different character in this film. But anyway, Dadan is a very um, strange sort of gangster. He's kind of really, really hyperactive, and it's really funny, but at the same time quite scary because he's a little bit of a lunatic. So Matko has a deal with... Um, Dadan that goes wrong and Matko can't cover the debt that he owes Dadan so Dadan instead of killing him offers him a suggestion that might solve this problem he says he'll wipe the slate clean of this debt if his sister Aphrodita marries Matko's son Zari so it's an arranged marriage and Zari and Aphrodita really don't want to marry each other but Dadan is really hell-bent on marrying Aphrodita off because it's his only sister that hasn't been married so he's basically forcing Matko into this situation because he says, if you don't agree, then you're going to have to pay me this money. So Matko is left in a very difficult situation. His son, Zari, really doesn't want to marry because he's in love with someone else. So regardless of whether or not these two want to marry, they're going to have to marry. So as the film progresses along, they really have to find a way to get out of this marriage and make sure that they don't make Dadan very angry because he kind of loses the plot when he's angry. 
So that's kind of where the story takes off. I'm not going to give you any more sort of synopsis. I don't want to spoil anything because it's definitely a film that you will kill me if I spoil it. So if you want to know more, please go out and watch the film. Hopefully that synopsis creates enough interest for you all. So my thoughts on the film. Now, as I said, the Serbian cinema lately has been very notorious for its extreme nature. Now, a Serbian film and Life and Death and the Porno Gang, both very extreme. So I was really excited and anxious and you know very curious to see what that sort of area of Europe could come up with in you know older sort of films. So this is a much older film than those two, and it's much different. Now, don't let that put you off. This is not an extreme film, but it's definitely not a film for the family because there's strong drug use and there's strong language. And there is one death scene, but it's nothing you've seen before. So it's not extreme, but at the same time, it's not something that you'd let the kids watch. So, um, yeah, it is very, very different, but at the same time, it has that high quality and very unique approach. Now, comparing this to other films, uh, it kind of reminded me of Jean-Pierre... Jeunet. Now, if you've heard of Delicatessen, Amelie, City of Lost Children, you'll know what kind of mood that that guy creates. It's kind of like a fantasy world mixed in with reality. And that's exactly what this film is like. But, he, but Costa Rica, who directed this film, he has a style of his own. So he's not ripping off Jeunet. So don't think that. But if you like that kind of fantasy world where it's a little bit surreal, then this one should appeal to you. Because I really had... Uh, a feeling that I was watching a Jean-Pierre Jeunet film. It was just that sort of unique approach. So if you like those kind of films, then I would highly recommend you check this one out. The acting was great. Sridhan Todorovic, who was Milos off a Serbian film, great actor. He was much younger than in this film, of course, and he played a much so, sort of different character, and it shows you the versatility that this guy has. And apparently he's quite well known in Serbia, so there's no surprises there because he really can act. Now, the characters were larger-than-life characters, and each and every one of them had their own personality. They weren't just cardboard cutouts, and it made a very, very interesting film. Now, lots and lots of characters in this one, so, you know, you kind of... It's the kind of film, at the end, you'll be picking out your favourite character, because each and every one of them are very funny, and they've got their own attributes to make them a different sort of person. So it's the kind of film you're in for. There's been a lot of depth and a lot of analysis inside these characters, and the director really respected the film, and he really wanted to make something really cool, and that's exactly what this film is. It's very light-hearted, but at no stage does it go too far with its comedy approach. It's not a straight-out, a silly sort of, um, you know, a slapstick sort of comedy. It blends comedy with seriousness really, really well. There are some scenes that you'll think are quite disturbing, but at the same time will make you laugh. So it's that kind of film. Although it's very lighthearted, there is still that um, element to it that makes it a serious sort of film as well. Now, the story was great. It kept me really interested from the first minute. Um, it kind of starts out slow, but then when Matko is in trouble with Dadan, that's when it starts to really get going. It goes for two hours, but at no stage is this film boring because of the way it's told. There's strong music presence in this film. Although it's not a musical, there is a lot of soundtrack. There's a lot of music, sort of old-fashioned gypsy Serbian sort of music. So if you're familiar with that area of Europe, you'll get a lot out of this one. I thought the music was very uplifting. It's not a film that's going to make you feel depressed. It's definitely a, a very sort of feel-good film. Uh, there's stuff in there, as I said, that will make you uh, kind of feel bad for laughing. But at the same time, nothing is shocking in this film. So don't worry about getting shocked. It's nothing like a Serbian film or Life and Death of the Porno Gang. This is a much tamer sort of affair, but at the same time, a film that matches the quality of those two that I've just mentioned. So... Definitely a film that I have not heard of before, which is a great shame, and I'm sure a lot of you out there haven't heard of this one either. I would highly recommend it. If you're a fan of Jean-Pierre Jeunet's work, you will definitely like this one because, you know, I really, really liked it. Wouldn't call it a masterpiece, but it's definitely a film that I'll be watching more than once. So that's the Yugoslavian film called Black Cat, White Cat, directed by Amir Kastaritsa. Very, very good director. Very, very good movie. Get out there and see this one as soon as possible. All right, guys, that's my review. Hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you later. Bye.